Hey y'all, it is Asia, the Fumbling Farmer here in um, North Carolina, zone 8A now. Um, and I'm just here to do a garden tour, show you what's going on in, I guess, very late December. Yeah, who knows what date it is actually today. I've been on break for two weeks. I don't know what date it is. So with that being said, I haven't done a video for two weeks. We were traveling and then it was cold and then it was wet and then it was cold and wet and so now here I am out here. So I figured we start off on the porch today um, and take a peek at what's going on there. So let's go. All right so down here we still have we still have our little chrysalis. That's going to be I think a swallowtail butterfly, black swallowtail butterfly. All right I have I don't know what this is but this is kind of cilantro. It's struggling a little bit out here. Um, and then I also have some parsley. I've been using this parsley, just used it in a recipe yesterday. And then over here, I have some more cilantro here. And then I have thyme, and I've been using this thyme a lot as well. So that's all I got going on there. I'm trying to get fancy, and I got like a little microphone. It's like pointing that way, so I don't know if that's going to like work. We'll see. We'll see. That's the fumbling part of this channel. There's a whole lot of we'll see. Okay, I'm going to put you down. Am I going to put you down? No, let's have you with me. We'll go through the unveiling together. Here we go. All right, so these have been wrapped up. Before I left, like maybe around December 20th, I had, um, I had, I'm trying to pinch these off. Oh, that's a loud motorcycle out there. I had put fertilizer on these and I put a little neem oil because I still had aphids. So you just coming along with me as I uncover these. Um, but I haven't looked at it since then. And today is, I think it's the 30th of December. So from the 20th to the 30th, it's been 10 days. Now, I am not expecting anything huge out of this last row here. Oh, I put a flower pot on it to hold it down. Here we go. So let's see what we got. All right, and garlic is still garlic in. Brussels sprouts are here. I planted these, I've said it before, planted these late. And so they're very tiny. And I think next year I'm definitely starting my fall garden indoors in like July. But back here, there's some lettuce that I accidentally spilled out of the seed packet. And it's kind of <laughs> kind of doing its thing. So there's that. There's some weeds growing in here. And some of these broccolis and cauliflowers are looking a little rough. Is that an aphid? What I did find is that this frost fabric yeah, is tons of aphids on there. Ew. This frost fabric keeps your plants alive, but it also keeps the aphids alive. So that's exciting. All right, let's see here. This was a lemon balm in this pot. I think I'm going to pull it all up and repot it um, and just plant some new plants. All right, this is more cilantro here. These are my calendula. It has a little bud on it. It just keeps going. And my rosemary. And then here we have the lacinato kale or dinosaur kale. Let me see back up a little bit. I think I moved it forward there. Okay, so I did harvest some. You can see at the bottom it's there. Um, had it in a delicious meal. Let's do a check. What is this? Ew, that's like something. What is that? Is that just water? No, it seems like really ooey gooey. Can y'all see this? Oh, maybe it is just water. Okay, I don't know. That seemed weird, man. I don't know what that is. Okay. How are you guys doing? This was my buddy that was doing rough, and this just might be my sacrificial plant. Sometimes you have one plant that all the bugs go to. It's like the weakest one. And sometimes I just let them have it as long as they leave my other plants 
alone and everything else looks pretty healthy. I also have in here some golden beets and just some red beets here growing in. And so those are doing okay. Every time I open this up, I just pull a couple weeds here and there. All right. And then what we got going here, random pot of strawberries. I pulled up my whole strawberry bed. Oh, I don't think I showed you all that. All right. And these are more uh, calendula in there. I kind of trimmed them up a little bit. I think a calendula went and reseeded in there too. So those are plodding along. And then in this last bed, we have collard greens. Oh, I see tons of aphids in there. Ugh. So these ones seem to be doing okay. I have come along and harvested some lettuce. I think tomorrow I'm going to make myself a turkey and cheese lettuce sandwich. Okay. What do you got going on here, honey? Yeah. So look at that. I don't know what that is. Why is it all black there? Is that all just aphid damage? See? Look at that. Or is that frost damage? I don't know. This one in here, I think, looks gross. I do see some big healthy aphids on there. Ugh. So, that one's struggling. This one, struggling a little. I did come along at some point, I think on that day where I gave it, what day did I say that was? Like the 20th? And I planted, I had had some starting lettuce starts. And that's those littler ones, like over, let me see if I can show you, over there. And there's one over here. And then there's a little one over there. I had some lettuce starts that I planted in the ground. Okay. So that's what's going on there. Also, this is random, but I planted some onion seeds. I was like, let me see what happens. So they did germinate randomly. That's what these little things are here, are the onion seeds. And so I guess we'll see. There's another one here. I guess we'll see what happens with those. Okay. Now, what else have I been working? Well, I, um, oh, let's see. Okay, I know I'm going to take you. Randomly, I didn't, like, I covered the peas up over here. I planted peas, and they weren't doing anything. And I covered them up with leaves, but I didn't pull them up. And then I noticed the other day that they're just poking through here. So, whatever. I'm just letting those do their thing right there. I don't really expect anything, but there's another, look at this. And it has a flower on it too. <laughs> Crazy plant. So it's been down like 30s in the 30s at night. So, and this has not been covered at all or anything. So it just kind of shows what can make it. Here I have my carrots still going along. I don't know what they would look like if I pulled it up right now. And I have some cilantro right here just growing. All right, I guess the biggest change that I did is I did pull up all the strawberries. So here's the strawberries. These used to be two separate beds and this divider, the old bed actually butted up right next to um, this planter here and it was like run along the edges and this trellis came down in the middle of the planter and you can still see that I'm going to find strawberry plants everywhere. These have been mostly pulled up. They'll be everywhere in the spring. I'll have to pull up more. But what I did was I ended up joining together this bed and kind of elongating it. It's not really filled with anything. It's filled with kind of the old dirt from the strawberry bed I moved over a little bit. And in the springtime, I will top it off with some compost in there. And this is where I'm going to put like my stuff that needs shade because this part of the garden here in the summertime, it gets, I mean, in the wintertime, it gets light, but in the summertime, those trees up above kind of shade everything that's in this corner. So the cilantro did well there, chives did well there. I think a few other herbs are going to do well there. Um, and I'll just try to find some other 
other things like spinaches maybe i might put a spinach back here things that need to be a little bit shady and and in a shadier spot so that's the plan with that okay i'm gonna come over here and give my compost bin a, a whirl I haven't done that for a little bit you want to see what it looks like inside or not really okay I, I want to see what it looks like inside let's take a look oh that's what it looks like there is a lot of soil in there but i cleaned out the strawberry beds and a bunch of other stuff so there's a bunch of sticks and everything that's not broken down at all yet so spin that around let it do its thing okay i don't know what this plant is i planted this one this is like a hibiscus kind of thing and then i don't know what that one is it just came up all right i got the little food lion i uh, not food lion but like discount planter kind of thing and it didn't really work that well for me it looks like there's one strawberry inside i think it was too far back from my house so i didn't water it enough i had strawberries in here it looks like there's one brave strawberry surviving but it looks like he lived a rough life he's kind of old and grizzled so let me just put some leaves around him and maybe if he can survive like this one is gone gone i think so is this so i had strawberries in there i think it was too far back from the house so i just didn't water it enough all right i have mint here that i had cut back and you can see it's already coming continuing to grow oh that smells good and here and then this is oregano in here and i don't mind that the leaves kind of fall down and cover it kind of keeps it warm and cozy and then i will uncover it in the spring okay and then in this bed this was my old pepper bed I still have some little baby sage plants going in here. They're not covered at all. They just hang out there. There's my chives. Oh, I need chives for a recipe today. Big old crazy cilantro bush. And I am coming to the conclusion that these possibly are parsnips. I had planted them and I didn't know what parsnips look like because I never planted them before. Um, but I think that these are parsnips. And they're not covered at all either and they're out here in the cold cold all right what else is going on in here i think this is some kind of thyme or oregano i don't know what it is all right but it's some kind of herb and then i have a random garlic so that's that going on there and this is usually my um root vegetable place because it's covered it's the deepest of my beds it's two goes up to uh pieces of wood instead of just one so in the i'll probably top that off and come back out okay what else what else is going on let's see. uh over here i finally got my three um blueberry bushes oops almost ripped three blueberry bushes replanted so hey they are kind of chilling hanging out in these pots so i think they'll do a lot happier they were in much smaller pots before so i think when the springtime comes they'll be hopefully pretty happy there are three different varieties but don't ask me what they are here's my kids looking for bugs i think underneath stuff okay and then finally here's my project i'm working on right now so this is going to be where i plant my tomatoes in the spring Oh, it's cold out here, y'all. Sorry for all the sniffing, but my nose is melting. Um, so I'm going to plant tomatoes in this bed in the spring, right? But I need some kind of trellising system. Last year, you know, tomatoes grow really tall. And so these little tiny tomato cages that they give you are not enough in the store because, like, they're over this size already before they even start like putting fruit on half the time so what i found myself doing was using some just metal and sometimes i use zip ties to put two cages together to give kind of a little bit more height to the support and the year i did that the first time i just had them standing separately and when they're standing separately, they kind of got blown over. So then last year I zip tied each of these supports together. So for example, I would take 
this one and this one and I put a zip tie around both of these units and zip tied them together and then I would go and have another one next to it and I would zip tie like this one and this one put a zip tie there so that they were together and I had three by three rows of those all zip tied together and they stayed up and lasted the whole time and everything so they were good but it was a pain um to get in the side the cages and that like so if you think of like the three by three block of them there was a cage smack dab in the middle and it was hard to get to that cage and we had like a lot of um weeds start to grow there that i couldn't reach it was hard to get to that to like uh get the fertilizer to it exactly if there was any bugs in that middle one it was on its own and so i didn't want to do it like that so this year what i'm going to do is i created these trellises here so they're just two by fours basically two by four by ten maybe two by four by eight i can't remember i think it's two by four by ten but anyway so i created those and then i put these little hooks along the top there and so the idea is is that i'm going to tie a piece of string here and connect it into the soil underneath my tomato plant when i plant it with a lawn staple and then the plan is that when the um when the plant grows up then i just i'm either going to get those tomato clips and clip it onto the string or i'm going to just wrap it around the tomato plant to help support it and hopefully that will be tall enough to give it the support it needs to grow and it'll give it the space now the reason it's sitting here in the middle of the lawn instead of being um instead of being in the dirt already is because when i put it up i realize it needs like a support down the middle too so i have some extra pieces of wood under my deck here so I'm going to go ahead and make a support down the middle. Here's the holes I dug to put them in. I also realized that these holes need to be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to dig these holes a little deeper and then I'm going to screw the actual pieces of wood to the side of the thing here. And I have to make another hole someplace in the middle here to kind of support that middle one. So that's my job for today that I'm trying to work on. Is doing I'm not going to hold you because I might not finish it all. I have something I have to go in, a, in like an hour and a half or something, and it takes me a while to figure stuff out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my tools and start working on this trellis thing now. And when I'm done and I have it all up and everything, and I'm gonna need help getting it up. So my husband or my older daughter might help me with that. Um, when I'm done getting it all installed and everything, then I'll show you and we'll see how it works. The only thing I'm thinking of, the only like, Thing that might be funky in my plans right now and you can help me out with this maybe it's like these are going to be really tall up but i don't want to attach string to it now because it's just going to be out in the elements so when this is up how do i get the string in here do i just get a ladder and put it in there so that's the only like kind of show, troubleshoot like what could go wrong and i think that's the only thing i'm thinking that could possibly at this moment is what's in my way and of course, it's going to be stuff I didn't think about. That's going to be what actually goes wrong. But yeah. Anyway. Yay. Um, so let me go get to work and I'll show you the finished product. All right. I came in to get my tools and I realized that I have not shown you an update on the seeds that I started. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of those right now. All right. Here we go. So this is just regular sweet, sweet basil. And I'm relieved to say that these are finally getting their little true leaves on them. It took so long, y'all. The red Reuben basil also is getting its true leaves finally. Um, this is, ooh, what is that? I think this is rosemary. It took like one of the longest plants to come up, but then it was one of the first leaf plants to get start getting its true leaves. Um, this one, lavender, only had one seed come up. But then I realized that it does need to, like the whole stratification process and I didn't do that for it. So I'm probably lucky even to just get that one. If it's not a weed, <laughs> maybe it's a weed, who knows? All right. Then my celery also took forever to get these little leaves on there. The, the um, plants are a little bit like yellowing here on these, the little baby leaves. So I'm not sure about that. I don't know if they're just getting old and tired. 
and they've used up all their energy now that the true leaves are there or if I have my light too close. So I don't know which one it is, but I'll keep an eye on it. And then finally, my goji berries. Mwah, mwah. These are one of the first ones to germinate and then they've just been sitting there and they don't have their any second set of leaves yet or anything. I'm trying to like peek at this one and imagine that that little spot in the center is like seeds coming up. But I don't know, that just might be a really strong imagination on my part. Okay, I'm ready to go out. Um, where's my tools? All right, these are my tools that I'm bringing with me. I have my drill and I always use this little drill bit thing. Sorry, it's got a piece of grass on it to um, drill, pre-drill my holes. It just makes it easier for me. Wait, we're walking and talking and holding tools. It's a lot going on. Um, and then what else do I have? Where's my thing? Then I have my little bit that I'm going to use. Here it is. Where is it? Oh, let me see if I can. No, nope. here we go. I have this drill bit here. It's like a little star shape because the screws that I'm using are these ones here and they require like that little star shape thing. So, and that's it. That's my tools that I'm using to make this trellis thing with. All right, now I'm off to build a trellis. Do you want to build a trellis? Grow your tomatoes big and tall. All right, I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So I got it drilled in there, the third supporting piece. And so when somebody comes back to help me lift them, I'm going to put them into each of those holes and then hopefully drill the two end ones into the little end piece here. All right, now I'm going to go inside for now because people won't be home till later. But I, I'm going to cover these up first. It's supposed to get down into low 30s, 31, 30 degrees tonight. So we haven't kept these al alive this far. Maybe I should leave it open and see if it kills the aphids. But I don't know. Maybe I'll try that. Let me try one night of leaving it open. See what happens with it. Because it's only going to be 30s. Next week is going to get down into the 20s. So I think, why don't I try to do that? See if cold treatment takes care of the aphids in there. All right, so I'm going to try that and see what happens. And then we'll go from there. All right, y'all. Um, I actually think I'm not going to stop the video yet. I think I'm going to, when somebody comes to help me put those trellises up, then I'll show you what the final project looks like. And then that will be the end of the video for today. All right, y'all. I'll see you in a little bit, but that's not like goodbye, just to see you later. All right, y'all, it's a few days later after that last video or last part of the video where I said I was working on the trellis. So here's what we I'm not all the way done yet. I'm definitely learning as I go. The one in the back was my first attempt. We ended up having some challenges because it wasn't, it was eight feet long, the piece I got, but I forgot that with this thing in the place, the bed would be longer than eight feet so I had to figure out how to make it flush with the walls there and so I have that done there um, this one the one in the back is pretty much in and solid so it has a little bit of a shake but I think it should be okay this one here is going to be much more solid um, I just have to figure out how to make sure that that is laying flush with the side of the box there so that's kind of where we are right now and what all right y'all so this is editing asia just breaking in really quickly i took this picture of the dirt when i dug the holes for this trellis because i thought it was pretty cool that you can see like the layers of the dirt way down there at the bottom is kind of the clay layer that is what our yard is made of it's the reason why i do raised beds because that was a pain in the butt to try to dig through and dig down and that's why i didn't go down that far in it and then like that darker layer of dirt coming up is like um, the compost and everything in my old soil um, it actually i had started these beds with a layer of um, clay i mean a layer of leaves at the bottom and so uh, that's completely gone, but it's this nice dark soil. And then at the top is like some mycelium and like fungusy things going on there that I thought is pretty cool. You can see the leaves start to break down. So anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool to see that. And let's get back to the video now. Now, and what it looks like. There's my little helper freezing her brains out. I need to bug that 
the bug vacuum. Um, it should be in the box in the in the library room. Okay. And so that's kind of what we're working with right now. Theoretically, I'll plant my tomatoes down there and I'll have a string strung up there and I'll be able to trellis the tomatoes that way once I get everything finished up and once it's time to plant. That, first, that second one, oh, that's my neighbors. They play video games with their window open. They'd be getting excited. All right. Um, yeah, the back one is definitely was learning curve, literally learning lean. And the front one I'm much more proud of. I never do stuff the right way the first time, but I definitely learn from my mistakes and fix it the second time around. So um, I think as far as I had gotten the wood because it was cheaper, but it ended up being more labor, probably because I didn't measure first and all that stuff. I was like, eh, it'll work. Um, so that definitely was more labor intensive anyway we are for tomato season almost i have to get finish up that other end cover everything back up but we're ready for tomato season when it gets here so yay all right y'all thank you for watching this video i know it was kind of long and rambly and a whole bunch of different stuff like garden and then indoor seeds and then trellis and then dirt and random things but thanks for hanging around for all of it um all right y'all i will see you later happy gardening